Rob McNelly asks, how do I install a client with my NIM server? The first thing you want to do is make sure your NIM server is resolvable in your environment. If it is not already in DNS, you might need to edit Etsy hosts so that your NIM server knows which client is trying to talk to it over boot P. In my case, I'm going to create an entry for NIM client at 172.28.4.195. After this is done, I will need to define my machine to the NIM server. When I do this, I like to change the kernel to an MP kernel, otherwise I take the defaults. Now I will perform NIM software installation and maintenance tasks. If we had a MakeSysB defined in our NIM server, we could use that, but in our case, we're simply going to do an RTE install from the LPP source and spot we previously created. I need to accept new license agreements, and then I have to change the dumbest default ever, the one where it asks you if you want to initiate, reboot, and installation now. If this were a live machine and it were listening to the NIM server, you could find that it kicked off an install before you were ready if you did not change this setting. Then I accept the license agreements in one more place and I hit enter. Now I need to go to my client. I'm assuming you've already defined it on your HMC. I'm just going to boot mine into SMS mode. I'm going to go into the remote IPL settings and I'm going to verify that my client IP address and my server IP address information is correct. In this case, I'm going to use the NIM server as my default gateway. Once I verify my IP information, I will do a ping test to make sure that it has network connectivity. If this all looks good, I go to the main menu and select Boot Options, and then I select Install Boot Device, then I list all devices. I will pick the Interpartition Logical LAN device, and I will select Normal Boot. I will answer yes, I am sure. The NIM client will send a Boot P packet. The NIM server will answer. The NIM server will start sending packets. Do not be surprised if it takes a few times for the client to get as far as booting AIX. It will ask you to define the system console, and from here the install menu should look familiar to you if you have installed AIX from CD in the past. I will press 1 to have English during the install, and I will change the install from a preservation install to a new and complete overwrite installation. Now we just wait as AIX gets installed. Depending on the speed of your network and your disks, I have seen this install process take just a few minutes via a NIM server, so do not be surprised if your installation runs very quickly. Once it is done, you will be able to log in as root and do your normal post-install tasks. Keep in mind the host name and IP address information have been retained and are set to what they were when you did your installation. Just as you will see with a normal installation, you will get indications of the number of file sets processed and the percentage of the tasks completed. This test system is not running nearly as fast as a real system would as I have crippled the disk subsystem to set up this demo. I will go ahead and do some editing and speed things up, but I just wanted to show you that the NIM install does a little bit at the end, then the machine finishes the reboot and you're able to get a login. Between these two videos, hopefully you have seen how easy NIM is to install and to use, and you will look into using this tool in your environment if you're not already doing so. Keep an eye out for other videos that I will be putting out in the future.